Next we have, the searchers take me for what I'm worth. This is a re-release from, I believe, 1980. Yep. So, um, this is my favorite searchers album. It didn't chart back in the 60s because of bad promotion. Um, and they weren't as popular as they used to be, but it's their best album and probably one of the best albums of all time. And definitely, I think, the best album in 1965. Well, probably in the top three. Um, but, uh... It's a great album. There's nothing wrong with this album at all. Um, four originals on it, which we really, I think we, or four, I should say, group originals. I don't know if they're technically group originals because they say they were group originals a lot, and a lot of the times they're not. So, um, and sometimes they would say that it's one person wrote it, and they actually all did. It's a lot. But, um, this is Chris Curtis's last album with the band. Which, um, you know, is really sad because he did a lot of stuff. Um, but, you know, it's a great, it's a great album. Um, and like I said, four originals on it, which I don't think we got four originals before, did we? Did we? I don't know. Maybe. We either got three or four before, but this has four on it. Oh, like I said, it's a great, you know, it's amazing. It's their best album, probably. It definitely is their best album. Um, two more albums to go after this. <laughs> okay. So I think number 12 is going to be I'm Your Loving Man. Um, I think that has a group vocal. If not, it's a Mike and Chris lead vocal. Um, I, I sort of feel it's a bit odd, but it's a great song. Um, the, Frank's bass on it is probably, it's, it's just amazing how he just go, sometimes it's amazing. Um, then we're going to go into number 11, which I think is going to be their cover of Does She Really Care For Me, which is the Searcher's most haunting song, in my opinion. <laughs> um, Chris just, like, sounds, like, really scary on it. Um, if you go and listen to it, like, at nighttime, like, in the dark, I don't recommend it. I haven't done it, you know, but don't. <laughs> um, great, great lead vocal from Chris Curtis, though, and a great, I think that's, yeah, because it has a guitar solo from Mike, yeah. Um, really great guitar solo, too. Uh, number 10, yeah. There's going to be Too Many Miles, um, which is the B-side to the title track, Take Me For What I'm Worth. Uh, weird, not weird, different sounding Mike lead vocal. It's like, <clears throat> you know, the Emerson, Emerson Palmer, yeah, that band. He sort of sounds like them in it. The, the uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, a little bit. Um, so, but he doesn't, you know what I mean? It's weird. But he sounds really, really cool on it. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. I'm going to go with You Can't Lie to a Liar, which I think is an original. It e no, it's not. Let me check. This might, this might also have a wrong credit on it, too. I don't know. I think on some things it says it's an original. On some it doesn't. It's weird. This is a very lost album. I mean, it was recorded in May 1965 and didn't come out until, like, like November or December, which is really sad because they should have put it out when it was supposed to come out. <laughs> um, anyway, You Can't Lie to a Liar. It's the really, like, the first time the fuzz guitar was used on a Searchers song. And I have to say, it's probably one of the early uses of the fuzz guitar, especially if it was recorded in May 1965. Um, it's got a really cool, or if, not fuzz guitar, maybe it's fuzz guitar. It's more um, reverberated, heavy, reverberated, light fuzz, I think, maybe, guitar. But Mike's vocal on it is great, obviously, um, accompanied by Chris. Number eight is going to be... It's Time, which is a John McNally composition. Um, 
he's uh frank does a bit of harmony with him on this one and john's voice in it is amazing as always they really should have let him sing more and i like john i think i believe it's john playing the lead on this one um he does a great little um guitar lick on it throughout and um frank's bass on it is great as always um number seven is going to be the version of fat domino's i'm ready which is sung by chris um it's got that 50s rock and roll feel to it you know staying true to the original and sort of um what their sound ha was out for a while um and a lot of the other tracks sort of aren't that sound but they still are but just not as much as you know as not as they're not as heavy in the sound that they used to have but I'm ready is not isn't as well isn't either but I think that one might be the most that's like their old sound um in in terms of really only um the vocal style and the drumming uh by Chris great I think there's a guitar solo for Mike in this one um yeah there is a great really really great guitar solo for Mike Number six is going to be, well, I toned tone down almost all side one, so I got to move to side two. Um, don't you know why? Um, I used to love this. I mean, I still love the song. It's just, I've played, I've played it too much, I think. <laughs> um, but it's a John McNally composition. Um, they say it's a curtis pender composition on the american version but the british version is definitely a mcnally song i believe yes yeah, it's, it's, it's a john it's a john song sung by mike and chris uh lead vocal from mike is amazing as always number four no number five sorry um is gonna be i think uh be my baby which is sung by frank allen um which we we only get like three or four lead vocals from him in their whole history in terms of the 60s i think there might be one in the 80s one or two but there's not much sung by him which very happy to hear him sing two on this album um two songs uh, the, it's it's an amazing cover. Um, Chris's drumming in it is great. Mike's guitar solo is extraordinary. Frank's lead vocal is really really good. Uh, it's got a haunting feel to it. Um, it's sort of like it's sort of like you're there. It's like like the whole time. Um, but it's just a great song. Um, they actually do it better than the Phil Spector Ronettes original. Um, in my opinion. Number four is going to be, I think I'm going to go with Four Strong Winds. The harmonies on that are just amazing. Um, Mike and Chris again. Mike taking one lead vocal, one lead vocal section and Chris taking the other. Which they did this on a few, uh, they did that together on a few songs. Two of them being on this album. Um, and then, that's amazing song. So that's the number four. And it's, or it's sort of like... Ugh, that's number four. It's got an like. It's got an acoustic sort of thing to it. They don't really have a, uh, and they just there's no drumming in it. And I think it's like Mike and Chris, or probably Mike and John playing guitar with Frank doing a little bit of a bass. Maybe Chris playing guitar a little bit too. Um, but I really love the harmonies in it. Um, it's a really sad song. I mean, it's a P.F. No, it's a Tyson song. I forgot his first name. But, um, yeah, number three, number three is going to be the title track, Take Me For What I'm Worth. This, this intro is a bit, it's, a, it's, you know, really amazing, sort of like the California Girls intro. Um, it's a really cool song. Sadly, only got to number 20 in the British charts in November 65. Um, but it's, it's an amazing song. It's like one of those lost hits in a way. Uh, number two is going to be Frank's, uh, lead vocal on I'll Be Doggone. Um, there's a Chris lead vocal of this too, but Frank sounds a bit fuller and so they chose his. Um, I really like the piano riff played by Tony Hatch. Um, great harmonies from, uh, Mike and, uh, Chris on this one. 
the thing that really does it for me is Frank's lead vocal. And number one is going to be their version of Jackie D. Shannon's Each Time, which was originally done by, like, some, like, the, the Bon Bonds or something, which is, we really don't know much about them. They're really, they're not much. But, um, I don't really think she wrote it specifically for them, because I think they wrote, she wrote it more for the searchers. And that's got Mike and Chris on it, um, with Mike doing most of the lead vocal, with Chris doing harmony, and singing the end of the bridge. So, um, again, it's an amazing album, and I think that concludes the review for Take Me For What I'm Worth. I was gonna do two others today, but I don't think I am. So, here you go.